Okay, so I'm going to get straight into this build and I'm going to build the saw horses first uh, just because if you build the saw horses then you can use the saw horses so it makes sense to build them first. I'm just using 4x2. Um, you can use whatever you've got but I've went out and I've bought this so I'm going to use this. So I'm going to start with the T section first. So there, that's going to be the top, the top section. So the reason for this is just because it's got to be glued. You could actually glue and screw this, um, but I'm just going to glue it and clamp it. So I'm going to start with that first. The T section actually has kind of a tenon on the end of it um, and this is to house the two legs so basically I'm going to be butting against the end grain which is going to add strength um, and then the end grain of the legs is going to be hitting against the underside of the the T section the bottom uh, the, the bottom underside so before I glue this up it makes sense for me to um, remove one cheek and remove the other cheek, cheek both sides and then get it glued up so that's what i'm going to do next i've got a scrap piece here uh, i'm going to use this as a marker for the legs because the legs are going to be the same thickness in this as a uh, 4b2 so i'm going to pull it back a little more than quarter of an inch i'm going to give it a little mark And then I'm going to square it across, so I'm going to square my line all the way around because there's cheeks to do on the both side. And the reason why I've left quarter of an inch, um, so when the whole thing's glued, glued and screwed together, I can just use my saw and flush cut that with the saw. I've just set this gauge here um, and I'm going to mark everything with this and then everything's going to be uniform. So I'm just going to create a knife hole here just to get a nice clean crisp edge in a knife valley. So at this point you could actually just use a chisel and, and hog it away with a chisel. Um, I'm going to use the saw just because it's a brand new saw. Um, if anyone is interested there's actually an affiliate link um, for this saw. This is a Gyogo, um, Ryobi saw. Uh, this is the only type of saw I tend to use. This is never out my hand. Uh, so if you want to help us out it doesn't cost you anything and I get a little kickback for that. So there will be a link in the description. you probably can't see but there is there is a little hump in the middle here um, it's and it's fine here it's fine along here it's fine along here which is the way we're cut it's just this mil this middle section here so I'm just going to use my chisel So I'm just going to mark it. And there's, there's where line up. So if you notice, I've left an overhang. Um, 
so there's some got to be cut off this and there's some got to be cut off that the reason i've left an overhang is because we're actually going to put a uh, ply on here there's going to be an inch um an inch section of ply so I want that ply to be buttoned against the underside of the T section to give it a bit more strength, so that's the reason for that. So I'm just going to use the quick release clamps just to get it into position. I'm going to use the F clamps. So these are quite good clamps, so you get a lot of pressure out of these. Okay, so the legs next. So I've settled at um, 15 degrees. Um, what I mean by 15 degrees, as if that's the, the vertical. I've actually went 15 degrees from the vertical. You could go a little bit greater, if you go a little bit greater it is going to be more stable but it's also going to take up a big, uh, bigger footprint when you're actually storing these so I've decided to go with that. One of the things I did do um, to, uh, to get the, a rough height, um, I haven't actually got the perfect height for me because I'm going to and I would advise you to, to actually use the, the whole thing, the bench and the, the saw horses um, and see how you feel. So. I would recommend that you make it taller than you need it um, have a little mess around with it and then chop some off the bottom um, to, to your liking so I've actually this is actually just a scrap I have semi made one of the saw horses which is actually in the background um, but how I worked it out I put it on a flat surface and I stood next to stood next to the piece and I put this round about next to me navel um, bearing in mind so you've actually got the tape piece to go on top of this and then you've got the bench itself or the slab section if you will so I think even even before I'd done it I knew it was going to be too high for me but I'd rather have it too high so I can bring it down to a comfortable height for myself so since I've already made one of the horses well semi made one of the horses um, I know the heights what I want to cut for the legs so I as I've just explained before, kind of get your height. So I've just got a bevel. I've set this at 15 degrees. <clears throat> um, if you look at it this way, it's 75 degrees. If you look at it that way, it's 90, <laughs> 105 degrees. Or if or if it was off off the off the off the ground that way, it would be like 15 degrees, or the horizontal roller. This is important, <laughs> just in case you forget, you've got to make sure that the bevel is going the same way as the one you've just marked. That's the length of the leg that I'm going to start with. And is what I'm going to do, I'm just going to mark these. And basically this is the side I'm going to lie flat on top of the rest of the timber and I'm going to use this as a template here yeah, to mark out the length of the other three legs. <laughs> Okay, so next um, I'm going to create the, the 15 degrees this way. So since I've already made um, or semi made one of them, um, I know that if I measure it down 15 millimeters, is what I can do with that. I can actually set my combination square and I can pull a line all the way across like so or alternatively you could just use a, a, a finger so one of the things you have got to watch with this 
Um, you might have some cupping in your board, so if you've got cupping in your board, you're going to get a cup line, so like pay attention to that part. So once I've done that, I'm going to mark the two edges. So if I get this into position, they will have 80 degrees, or rather 75 degrees, sorry. And the same on the other side, same thing. And as a guide line, I want to pull the line down the bottom, or on the face roller. Okay, so this is actually um, a pretty square cut, yeah, but I do need to clean it up a little bit. Um, it is slightly out on this corner, so probably a block plane would be better for this, but there's probably a lot of people that don't have a lot of planes, so I think one of the most common planes is a number four, so I'm going to use a number four, just clean this up a little bit. At this point what you could do um, when you once you get pretty close is just to get one of the scraps or another piece of scrap wood glue some sandpaper on and just basically sand it flat um, I'm not going to do that what I'm going to do I'm just going to use uh, the Shinto rasp so when you use the Shinto rasp just be careful that you're not when you're going backwards and forwards and whichever way you're going um, just make sure you're not kind of rounding over one of the corners so so when I'm doing this I'm trying to apply pressure at both ends um, and I'm only going in little circular motions so you can actually go this way, kind of across, but I like to do the circular motions. And that feels pretty good. So when you are doing this, just don't forget just to check it with a, with a straight edge just to see where you are so that's pretty good so something else to note um, the technique I've just used with the shuttle rasp with this uh, or the piece of sandpaper um, before you actually glue this these two sections together um, you could also use it for to, to clean these faces up um, just something I thought I'd mention so one thing to check when you've actually cut all these faces is to check that the angles are correct. So I have got a little step here, but if I bring it forward, I have got the same angle. So that that being a different depth isn't too much of an issue because I have got the same I have got the same angle and I've got the same angle with these two, obviously with this one. So where I haven't got the same angle is this guy here and it looks like I'm slightly high at the edge here so what I'm going to do I'm actually just going to pull a pencil line down and 
I'm just going to pull a pencil line across and now I'm just going to remove this this pencil line with a plane only maybe the first third I'm going to check if I square Yeah, that's pretty flat So what I'm going to do with these I'm going to offset the Offset the screws so basically this means that When I drill it through I'm not going to, there's not, not going to be a chance of us hitting the screw That's getting screwed in from the other side So Obviously I offset this one to this one, which will be the two that are going together and it's going to be the same uh, with the other side for the legs. Generous amount of glue. So one of the things to remember when you are doing this is to make sure you've got good contact to this section and you've also got good t contact to um, the end grain on the on the T section as well one of the things because this is on a this is on a bevel um, you kind of actually put the two the two bottom ones completely in um, and these two the two lower ones are actually going to be changed so i'm actually going to get the other side and i'm going to swap these two screws for longer screws so the reason being once i get the other side in i can actually screw all the way through so the screw is going to grab this the middle and the other leg and i'm going to get that coming in from both ways um and the the top screws are going to stay as is. Um, they will go through and grab the other end. So now, now I'm going to just swap those screws out. So as you can see, they are they are quite a lot bigger. And as I said, these are going to go through and they're going to grab both um, legs. So I'm only going to do this to the two bottom ones. So while I'm here and I've got the camera positioned, um, I'm just going to trim this up. Um, obviously, if you've got a lot of excess uh, glue squeeze out, you're probably going to want to wipe that down and even leave it to dry. But since I've got things set up, I'm going to cut it. So I do want to clean this up because there is still some fibres so remember you're not actually going to cut all the way through this because we've still got the ply to go on yet before we trim it so while I let that one dry for a little bit I've actually got the, uh, the other saw horse which has been drying overnight so I'm going to add the, the ply for the front I'm going to um, get it in place, mark out for it uh, and get this cut and this is going to be glued and screwed as well Okay, so I'm going to level the legs. Um, I already know my height, what I want the bench to be. Um, plus, obviously, this has got a rock. So I think the majority of people will have this. Um, so I'm just going to show you how I do it. Um, 
and I'm actually just going to use some um, some loose change that I've got um, and equal it out um, and then mark them I mean you could get really technical with this um, you could get a spirit level out and make sure it's like 110 percent like level but uh, i'm not gonna go <laughs> and do that so as i said i'm just gonna use some pennies So I'm actually just gonna I'm gonna try a two pence piece under and the two pence piece under the other side. Mm. Still a little bit, still a little bit so I think I'm gonna try uh, a ten pence piece which is slightly slightly bigger. Yeah, so that's it. So I've used two 10 pence pieces on this leg and this leg. And I'm just going to use this. This is just a scrap piece of wood, um, pencil on it. Um, again, nothing special. And I already know my height that I want to begin with. I may drop this down in the future, but this is what I'm going to start at. And. I'm just going to mark all four legs. And while I'm here, I'm just going to use, I'm just going to use my little plane. just to put a chamfer on these and as all this does is just uh, stops the um, any any splitting um, sometimes when you're dragging these around they can split and sometimes a split can come yay far up the leg so it's always a good idea with any sort of leg to put a chamfer on it Okay, so I'm actually jumping ahead of myself. Um, so before I actually put the two end pieces of ply on, it's going to be easier for me to actually put this um, stretcher in. So I'm going to mark out for this stretcher uh, and basically fit it. So I'm just going to use a square, get this thing lined up because I know this leg straight and I know this, this leg is actually square with a frame. Um, the two of them are so as long as this is straight we should have a nice straight line across and that's what I'm going to use for my first markings so I'm just going to use a mortar gauge just to get the thickness or the depth if you like uh, I've already um, set this up for the thickness of the stretcher Okay, so I've just cut a bit of a valley here and on the other side and what that's going to allow us to do is to register the stretcher against the the shoulder that I've just made or, or the shoulder that I'm going to make and I'm going to get a nice and I'm going to get a nice fit Thank you. 
And now I'm just going to shim these up. Okay, so since I'm actually messing around with the design, I'm actually not going to put another stretcher in the, the front side. Um, I'm actually going to put this in and this is going to go on the inside of the leg um, if you, as you can see um, that's just a block of wood that's been glued into position uh, same on the other side and as what I've done I took some scrap of this material and I just planed it down to 80 degrees just to match the the splay of the legs um, and what this is actually for just an idea or a concept if you will just so that the saw horse can be used in the same fashion as a moxon vise so I'm gonna I'm gonna glue and screw this on the inside. Um, this isn't particularly gonna be one of the easiest things to do since I've got the back legs that are gonna be in the way. But um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and do this. Um, so if anyone's wondering what all these clamps are about, this is just basically so I can get this. Um, nice and square so these these two um, vertical pieces of wood are just representing um, let's just say a board that's going to be um, dovetailed so basically I've got these here and it means I can get these into position and lined up which I've already done and I've penciled I've penciled these up so basically I've just got to glue these clamp them into position and then get some screws in So, just to give you an idea. And then you would be ready to dovetail, obviously, put another another clamp here, but then you would be ready to do your dovetailing or, or whatever you want to do. Okay, so before I actually glue and screw this into position, it's going to be easier for me to actually um, drill the holes in while it's loose. Um, I'm just going to use a bracing bit, you use whatever you want. I'm opting uh, for three quarter inch because everything else, so all me, me Roman work benches are three quarter inch, so I can utilise all the, the pegs and the, the, the dogs that I've got for all these benches so it makes sense to keep all these three quarter inch what you can do and what you should do if you haven't got a lot of experience with these is actually just check for square um, and I'm not too bad there um, and as, as you drill through the hole um, just keep on checking uh, obviously once the screw portion comes through we'll want to stop because otherwise you're going to blow through Okay, so I'm going to get this um, glued and screwed. 
Um, something to note here, um, the camera actually decided to switch itself off before. Um, after drilling these holes, I did actually uh, put a little chamfer here. That was just with a large counter sink. Um, and this, this just helps when you're using pegs. Um, it enables a peg to go in a lot easier. Um, it's not necessary, but I do like to do it when I'm doing anything like this. Now I'm just going to trim uh, the edges up to make these flush so all of this front's going to be clampable. Okay, so we're pretty much nearly done. Uh, one more thing that I opted for, um, another kind of experiment, if you will. Um, this is just uh, to add a little edge. So I'm actually just gonna glue this into position and get it clamped up. And all this is going to be for is so I can, when I'm using the saw horse just by itself, I can actually rest boards onto this ledge and I can actually edge plane with it. That's kind of the idea behind it. If you are doing this, um, remember to fix this onto the side where the stretch has housed in and not where this guy is, because if you put this on the other side, it's actually going to foul this and this is pretty much going to be redundant. Yeah, so take that into consideration when you're doing it, because I've just nearly done it myself. So I'm going to glue this and clamp it and that's the hose finished. Something else I've done as well, here uh, you can probably see, um, I might add these corners, um, 45 degrees, and I also put a chamfer, like a small chamfer on all the edges, and this is just so there's no sharp edges, so I don't catch myself when I'm working. <laughs> 